Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about the product and the quotient rule. And so uh, what we learned in the last section is we learned about how do we take the derivatives of sums, how do we take derivatives of something multiplied by a constant, uh, and how do we use the power rule, and so on. Today we want to learn about what are called the product and the quotient rules, and that is what if we have two things multiplied together, two different functions that are multiplied together. So let's say that we have something like this. I'm going to call it uh, capital F of x is equal to some function little f of x times some function g of x, okay? So we have a function that is a function times another function, and I'd like to take the derivative <coughs> um, capital F prime of x. And so how do you take the derivative of two functions that are multiplied together? All right, so the sum rule is that if I have f of x plus g of x, then the derivative is f prime of x plus g prime of x. So we might think that this is the same thing, where the derivative of capital F is just the derivative of f times the derivative of g, uh, but that's wrong, okay? You can't just take the derivative of each one separately and say that that's the derivative. And a very easy example of this would be, let's say that we have capital F of x is equal to x squared, okay? Uh, x squared also could be written as x times x. So we know what the derivative of x squared is, uh, it's 2x, right? But if we used our made-up rule that we could just take the derivative of each one separately, then what we would get is the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of x is 1, and so the derivative should be 1, but we know it's 2x, and that's wrong. So we can't just take the derivative of each one and multiply them together. We have to do something different. And this different thing that we do, we call the product rule. And let me write down what the solution is first, and then let's figure out why, okay? So the answer to this is it's f of x times the derivative of g plus f prime of x times g of x. Okay, so it's the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second one left alone times the derivative of the first. Okay, this is what we call the product rule for taking derivatives of two things, functions that are <coughs> multiplied together. Now, this isn't obvious <laughs> by any means that this is the derivative. So what I'd like to do next is show you why is this the derivative? In order to figure out what the derivative of this function is, uh, we don't know how to do this necessarily, so we have to go back to the definition of the derivative. And the definition of the derivative says that we need to take the limit as h goes to zero of this difference quotient. All right, so now let me do a little work here with this limit and hopefully turn it into something that I can evaluate. Okay, so I've got the limit as h goes to zero of capital F of x plus h minus capital F of x over h. Well, I could rewrite that as the limit as h goes to zero. Capital F of x plus h is little f of x plus h times little g of x plus h. So this is f of x plus h times g of x plus h. Uh, then minus f of x, which is minus little f of x, g of x, all over h. All right, so now I'm going to do something a little bit tricky, <clears throat> and that is that I'm going to use one of the two big tricks of mathematics, at least in my opinion. Two of the big tricks of mathematics is adding zero and multiplying by one. And in this case, I'm going to add zero, but I'm gonna add zero in just the right way. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I don't I don't have anything right now that I can really do with this limit, so I'm going to add some zero in, and let me show you <coughs> what it's gonna become. So I'm gonna take this, it's gonna go up here, and I get the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h times g of x plus h. And then I'm going to subtract from that f of x plus h times g of x. Then I'm gonna add that same amount, f of x plus h uh, times g of x. And then I still have this minus f of x g of x, minus f of x times g of x, and that's all over h. All right, um, so all that I did here, I already had this term, I already had this term, so I added and I subtracted this middle term. So really all I did was I added zero. So nothing really has changed here. Now I'm gonna break this up into two fractions, okay? So this is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of, I'm gonna take these first two and group them together. Now notice in these first two terms, there's an f of x plus h in common. So I'm gonna factor it out. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna write it this way. This is f of x plus h times, uh, there's a g of x plus h, minus a g of x divided by h. Okay, so I just factored f of x plus h out of the first two terms. And then I'm gonna break the second two up into another fraction. This one has in common a g of x. So let's factor out the g of x and I get plus, by the way, this whole thing is inside of the limit. Uh, we have plus g of x times, this is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And then I can close my parentheses. All right, now we know that if I have the limit of a sum, then that's the same as the sum of the limit. So I can distribute the limit. And that's also true across products. So I could just take the limit of each one of these things individually. So um, let's write that really quick. I'll have to write it kind of small so I can fit it on the board. But I get the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h times the limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h uh, plus the limit as h goes to zero of g of x times the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, so I distributed the limit through, and now let's take some limits. The limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h. Well, if h goes to zero, we just get close to f of x. So this limit just becomes f of x. The limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h minus g of x over h, this is a limit of a difference quotient. But a limit of a difference quotient, that's what we call a derivative. Which derivative? The derivative of g. So we can just write this limit is what we call g prime of x. Then we have the limit as h goes to zero of g of x. Well, there are no h's in g of x, so as h goes to zero, this is just a constant with respect to h. So I just get plus g of x, and then I get the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, which now we realize is f prime of x. And so what I just showed is that capital F prime of x 
is equal to f of x times g prime of x, plus, if you'd like to read this the other way, these, of course, commute f prime of x times g of x. In other words, it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And that's how we get what we call the product rule for derivatives. So now we know the product rule. And I wrote it right here for you just one more time. So the product rule tells us that the derivative of the product of two functions is the first function times the derivative of the second function plus it's the derivative of the first function times the second function. All right, now we could also talk about what's called the quotient rule. Okay, the quotient rule uh, is similar in a way. It, it looks a little bit more complicated, but we could prove the quotient rule in much the same way that we prove the product rule. I'm not going to go through that proof right now. The proof would be in your book if you're interested in going through that one as well, or try it yourself. Uh, so the quotient rule says the following. If I have a function and it's equal to f of x divided by g of x, then the derivative is going to be <coughs> g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x over g of x squared. And the way that I like to remember this is it's the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. And one thing to notice here is for the product rule, it doesn't really matter which one you take the derivative of first uh, because you can flip-flop these two guys and you still get the same thing. So you can choose, do I want to take the derivative of f first or g first. With the quotient rule, it actually matters which one you take the derivative of first. And you need to take the derivative of the top first. So the way that I remember personally how to do this is whenever I'm using the quotient rule, the first thing I always write down is what's on the bottom. So just take the bottom, write it down first, and then you remember to take the derivative of the top. So whenever you're using the quotient rule, just remember, the bottom gets written down first just as it is. Uh, now let's do some examples and see how this works.